Section 5 of Captain Billy's Whizbang, Volume 2, Number 18, March 1921. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Captain Billy's Whizbang, Volume 2, Number 18, March 1921, by W. H. Fawcett. Picture Land Flattery. Editor's Note. Here's a story for young girls with movie ambitions. In fact, it's a crackerjack of a story for women in general. I do not believe that the public, outside of Los Angeles, realizes that the favorite form for gaining a lady's favor is to tell her she ought to be in pictures. Girls strange to Los Angeles fall hard for this style of flattery, very often with serious final result. Designing men quite frequently bunco the fair and trusting creatures, and those who know, Declare it is surprising how the ladies like the movie flattery. But here is the story, true to nature and only intended for the eyes of the fair sex. By Richmond. Young women who desire to break into the movie should be prepared to take a little breaking in themselves, unless they indeed are fortunate and bump into a man instead of some of the rat horde that infests movie land. No line of business in the world combines more petty jealousies than creep through the picture world. Men play the women against one another. Women play men, and the whole bunch forever conjure to hold the upper hand. The following recital, by a clever French woman, who sought a place in filmdom, is typical. This woman was on the point of leaving for New York, where she admitted that it would be necessary for her to wear scant clothing in front of assembled multitudes at the Winter Garden, but better she thought than performing same for the benefit of sundry individuals who pass the girls along according as new faces and opportunity offer. The woman in question was French, of superb figure and doubtful picture talent. She was a fine dancer, also a singer. She told of being invited to the home of well-known Hollywood character Prince Trabalski and wife who recently departed presumably for Europe. Trabalski ranks as one of the greatest sculptors in the world, and his Hollywood home saw many a hijinks, intrigue of love, and gambling revel. The prince, a good-natured old fellow, cared not what anyone else did, so long as he could gamble and not be obliged to eat meat. His wife enjoyed the society of young men, though not many of them seemed to break their necks courting her favor. The princess didn't get by very well, not any too sweet with a little tea abroad. So our lady of film ambition meets a number of men who lounge in and out partaking of the Trabowski hospitality. Says the first, How comes it, madame, with those eyes you are not in pictures? Surely there must be some mistake. Now I am the leading man of the company. I am sure I could get you a chance if you would like to try. But of course we must go out to talk it over. A little dinner, perhaps, tomorrow night in my apartment. We... But, my dear, what is there to be talked of? The leading man seems to think the lady dull and drifts away. Then the second. Who? That fellow told you he could get you a part? Why, he's only the leading man. I am the director. Leave it to me. Just you and I will go out for a little dinner tomorrow night and talk things over. But, my dear sir, the leading man also asked me to go out with him to dinner, or come to his apartment so the business could be settled. Still, a third man. Did he say he was director? I am the director. He is only the assistant director. He has no say. I will fix you up, you black-eyed beauty. Tomorrow night, if you meet me, I'll have a fine big car, so warm inside. We will take a little trip, you and I. Oh, just to talk over some details, I... Madam speaks again. But my dear sir, three times now tonight have I been asked out to dinner to see what shall be done for me to get a part. Does one always have to eat dinner before getting into pictures? A fourth man. Piffle, I am the manager of the entire company. Those fellows haven't a word to say about it, just bunking you. Come with me to my little cabin up in Laurel Canyon tomorrow night. It is quiet, and we will not be disturbed while talking over the business. I, but still a fifth. Don't let those men kid you. I have put up all the capital. My father is a rich man in South America. When it comes down to it, these fellows work for me, and though I don't interfere much, naturally I would hate to see a girl that looks like you get left. The madam talks once more. 
I cannot go to dinner with you. I have been asked by the four other men. I might take a chance with the leading man, because he's halfway young. Though everyone says he doesn't count. If I had to eat dinner with someone, I'd guess I'd pick out the youngest and let you burned outs try your luck somewhere else. But I'm eating by myself tomorrow night. Two or three cameramen and some publicity agents possibly invited the lady out to dine. But the one she seemed to remember began with the leading man and ended with the fellow who said he owned the bake roll that kept the company on the map. Couldn't understand. Bellboy. Good morning, Rastus. I's done lost my job at the Lorncrin Hotel, and I can't understand how come. Rastus. What you done, nigga? Stole something? Bellboy. All I done was to go into the main dining room and page a girl cup carry age. End of section five.